Join us for a further look at what's playing itself out in that market scene. It's Wayne McCurry from FNB Wealth and Investments. Wayne, a pleasure. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. It's been quite a week, Wayne. Uh, at some points, we had green screens all around. Now we're looking at red screens all around. Talk to us about what we've had to contend with. <clears throat> look, by and large, this week has been good news. And the good news was the Federal Reserve Bank clearly indicated interest rates are coming down. And they'll come down probably at their next meeting, which means we will get interest rate cuts as well. And that's good news. However, the negative news and the reason for the market uh, falling, especially overseas, I mean, we're coming off lightly here. When you look at what's happened to the Nikkei and you look at the main markets in America, they're down a lot more. Is that some economic news came out of America that's really poor. And it was a lot worse than expected. And coupled with companies like McDonald's and Walmart and quite a few consumer-facing companies saying, it's tough out there. We aren't growing our sales. The consumer hasn't got money. Now everyone's worried about earnings. So they're not worried about interest rates going up or inflation going up. Everyone knows they're going down, but now they're worried. Is this a hard landing? Is the economy worse off than what we thought it was? And are earnings going to be bad? And especially on the NASDAQ shares, the shares that have really done so well, they're expensive. And expensive shares cannot tolerate any form of earnings disappointment. So you saw last night Intel, uh, earnings disappointed, they were knocked down 20%. I mean, these are big companies and they're getting knocked down. And we can just see volatility in the market. I mean, one day uh, NVIDIA is up 7%. You know, so he's down 7%, then up 11, then down another 7. You know, these are volatile times, especially for the big NASDAQ shares. But that's the real concern today. I mean, our market's still up for the week. We had a glorious day on, on Wednesday, I mean, especially the mining shares. So this is honestly quite normal, is that the market will anticipate the interest rate cut. It will run up before it becomes definitive. And then when, you, when, when it's almost in the bag, the market will actually fall. But understand, this is one day's movement. You know, don't read too much into one day's movement. And, of course, this afternoon's job data out of America will be critical. If that's really poor, surprising enough, the market might go up because the interest rate cuts might not be a quarter percent. They might be half a percent. They might come earlier. The, earlier the Fed might convene a, a special meeting to cut the rates. So a really bad jobs number, surprising enough, as I said, might even be good for the market. So this afternoon's data is really important. Very interesting indeed. I think uh, one thing we're also trying to see here, based on those earnings, um, Wayne, that we've seen, trying to also look at uh, these tech stocks. Very interesting to watch how they've performed, of course, uh, also possibly responding to the macros, but they've had their own uh, kind of investment case over the last few months. And I'm wondering how yes. that is faring now that uh, we do see the likes of Amazon out uh, and also, you know, uh, a, lo a lot of the big seven. Yeah, look, if you disappoint in earnings, you're going to get slaughtered. Now, Apple came out. They were they were okay. Amazon were a little bit disappointing. Their share came down a little bit. But understand that the, the – I mean, I don't want to say the age of tech is over, the age of AI is over, because clearly it's not. But the age of the massive outperformance of the shares might be drawing to an end. Because as interest rates fall – the consumer companies are the ones that are actually geared to further consumer expenditure, and they're the ones that may have the more upside to it. But, of course, another bit of good news today, even though the market is almost interpreting it as bad news, is that the U.S. 10-year bond is below 4%. That's incredibly good, especially for emerging markets, is that the, 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 the cost of capital is reducing, and the bond market realizes, look, uh, interest rate cuts are coming, and we can't sit up at these high levels anymore. The economy is slowing. So the overall cost of money is coming down. And as I said, that's very good for emerging markets in particular. And then 
as we try to take stock, Wayne, of, of course, a hard landing and soft landing, which might dominate our conversations over the next week, uh, then I guess what then the oil price then comes into question. So, of course, we have the OPEC plus, uh, you know, countries really trying to control issues of supply and yeah. demand. But at some point, uh, you know, the big economies like China and the U.S., they also have a big sway. And I'm wondering how we can take, uh, you know, make sense right. of the numbers we're seeing with oil. Look, ultimately, my experience in the market is that commodity prices are driven by demand, not by supply. So OPEC mm -hmm. can cut, but if there's no demand, price isn't going up. I mean, there are some exceptions, and but very, very few. You can maybe argue that platinum and palladium, the PGMs, are an exception. But we can also see their price collapse, even if supply is cut. So ultimately, you know, demand drives commodity prices. Now, there's, the economies are slowing down. We all know the property uh, foes, the property woes in China and how that's affected their economy. And, of course, now we're starting to see real data coming out of the U.S. about an economic slowdown. I mean, I would have sworn blind that, you know, they would have gone into a recession last year with C, given the massive increase we've had in interest rates. But obviously that's taken a lot, a long, long time to actually work its way into the effect on the consumer's pocket. But we are definitely seeing that now. But, you know, we must not be concerned. All of this is actually, as I've said a few times, good news for emerging markets and good news for South Africa, that lower interest rates tend to favor emerging markets because you normally get some recovery in commodity prices and ultimately lower interest rates means better economic growth. And then I must also ask you about what we're seeing coming out of the Eurozone there. We saw that inflation ticking up higher after a cut. What can we say about that? Uh, you know, of course, it is just one month. Uh, we might have to see it play out a little yeah. bit longer for us to understand the trajectory. But uh, how are markets taking stock of that? Look, I think it was a little bit surprised on the upside. But clearly, the trend is still down on inflation. I mean, the oil price has still got to come through. Lower consumer demand has still got to come through. And, of course, yesterday the UK cut their rates. That's so the Eurozone and the UK that's cut their rates. So I don't think it's going to upset that cycle at all. I think there will still be further rate cuts. But, of course, their markets are coming off because the US cut. Wayne, I want to get your stock pick in a bit. But first, let's uh, take a look at uh, counters that have found favor with industry peers. I'm going for Rembro. Um, Rembro is a highly diversified company. They have a healthcare business, MediClinic. Um, they have some financial assets such as Outurance, which is extremely good business. They have a fiber business. Um, they have some industrial businesses. And it trades at a 47% discount to NAV. And as I said, it's, 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 it's in some ways like a unit trust on the JSE. And I think you can buy this one at a discount. It's got unexciting management, but it's sufficiently cheap. My stock pick is going to be Kumba Iron Ore. I think if you look at Kumba against a RAND iron ore price, specifically take into account that they produce 64%, um, not a 62% quality on their resource, and they have a very high lump to fines ratio, you, you should be getting a much better sort of rating in terms of uh, the Kumba share price against iron ore. That coupled with the fact that a large part of their sort of the sort of weak earnings over the last, uh, it's only the last half, are, are due to sales volumes, which is driven by Transnet. Now we're hearing the governments are working on Transnet, they're working on ports. Kumba's producing 36 million tons, where they used to produce 44 million tons. It's not a short-term story, but in the medium to long term, if those efficiencies can come back, that's pure margin. Uh, my stock pick has to be ShopRite. ShopRite has been doing very well. Uh, it's the best performer in a uh, failing uh, let's say, sector. And, I mean, even though the P.E. ratio is quite high, it is, does seem a bit expensive. But, I mean, looking at where they are, who they're fighting against, and their positioning, that's why I'm picking them right now. Please get your thoughts on some of these. Mostly, I think, SA facing Rembro, sure. Kumba, and ShopRite. Yeah. Look, I mean, obviously, ShopRite's just winning the game. I mean, no one's touching them. The online is going through the roof. The sales growth is massive. I mean, you compare it to the other retailers, you know, their sales growth is huge. I know they said 12%, but they opened up a lot of stores. But even if you take that into account, and you look at the Woolworths food results, they're still doing much better. They're getting proper volume growth. They really are cleaning up. So 
I'm a little bit cautious about the share price, but I would still buy it. But knowing that a lot of good news is already in the share price. And Kumba Iron Ore, I concur totally. I mean, it might take two years, who knows? I mean, Eskom seems to have been sorted out a lot quicker than what everyone thought it would be. So maybe Transnet can get sorted out quicker than two or three years, but they will get those extra tons through, the, through to the port. And hopefully they will do that in a commodity upcycle with much higher iron ore prices, and it will all fall to the bottom line. You know, unfortunately for Kumba and many other South African companies, we haven't participated in the last two economic upcycles, the last two commodity upcycles, because Transnet and the port couldn't handle any extra volume. So hopefully this time around it's better for us. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm with on, on, on that one. And then finally on Remgro, look, Remgro has obviously got good assets underneath, but the so-called investment trust has fallen out of favor hugely on the stock market. And a 50% discount is just crazy, but unfortunately it might stay there. Because you know, the only way to truly unlock that discount is to sell the underlying assets and redistribute to your shareholders. Now Remgro is doing exactly the opposite. I mean, they took a MediClinic off the market. You know, they didn't want to unbundle it or sell it. They actually uh, put it on their balance sheet. So maybe 50% is too much. But unfortunately, in our market, there'll always be a discount on companies like Rembrandt, Rembrandt but maybe 30% is a better number. So I do agree there is upside there. And which account are you having this afternoon? I'm going for BHP Billiton on the back of what we've been talking about. Lower interest rates should give higher economic growth. We should see a commodity upcycle after being in a down cycle for a long time now. And Billiton's the one share that's Really, I think one of the cheapest in the whole mining complex. And it's really just a play in the commodity cycle. Hopefully, I'm right. We'll see what transpires over the next two to three years. Well, Wayne, always a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you for your time this afternoon. You. That was your Midday Markets Update with F&B's Wayne McCurry.